this is the first time visiting my channel, I just wanted to welcome you here. I teach drawing and mixed media here on YouTube and I really try to make your life super easy so that when you're sitting down at your easel or your art journal, you know exactly what to do so you can get to your happy place as fast as possible. Now today I have this drawn with sunglasses. I am using my hamburger mixed media system and if you're thinking what? the heck is this woman talking about? That is my layering system. They invented probably about five years ago, but I introduced YouTube to it in the year 2019. And if you would like to follow along all the layers, I will spell them out very specifically and directly in this video, but I also have a cheat sheet that lists all of the layers. So if you wanna get your hands on that while you're following through the video, you may do so. Just leave me a comment below and let me know if you like it. This mixed media hamburger layering system has become so popular I can't believe the results that people are getting I see it all the time both my students at awesome art school and in my Facebook group are sharing the projects they're making with the hamburger system and it's super exciting and cool to see so many successful products made this has also turned into a book since then but all the information is right there in your cheat sheet so if that's all you got don't even worry about it now without further ado let's get started all right, so layer one can be collage or adhesive, but I'm gonna skip layer one and go straight to layer two today, which is acrylic paint. Now, one of my favorite ways to do backgrounds is spray painting through stencils. This is actually one of a different project because the background I started today is super old. Did a long time ago, but this, I wanna show you the exact process I use, and that is it, my friends. So fast, so easy, and so much freaking fun. So there's the background. You can see the stencils right there. So yeah, you can actually skip layer one altogether if you're not in the mood for collage. And I should also mention while I'm working on a canvas, I use these exact same techniques in all of my big art journal spreads. So don't think that just because I'm working on a canvas, you couldn't do this on a smaller scale in your art journal because I do it all the time and it's super fun and it works every time. So I'm using my Stabilo All Woody pencil, which is really, really highly reactive to a liquid and I'm kind of cool with that. So my gel gesso here I'm using and the gesso and all the paints today are I'm grabbing from my fairy faces signature paint kit that is sold by Jerry's Artorama. Thank you Jerry's. It, it all is Lucas Krill acrylic paints which I've been using for over a decade. Love 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 them. Super honored to be one of their Jerry's ambassador artists and the colors in the fairy faces set are freaking awesome and I know that because I picked them out myself. So all the ones I'm using today are for that very set and I will list um, a link in the description box below if you want to go check it out. So I'm putting two coats of gesso. Basically if you you have two choices. You can do two coats of gesso and one coat of paint on top or the or vice versa where you do one coat of gesso and two coats of skin color on top. Um, doesn't really matter. It's just like painting your wall. Sometimes you need a couple good coats of primer before you get going with your wall paint. It's exactly the same with in mixed media projects. So if you want the background to show through, then obviously just one thin coat of gesso would work. But um, the gesso that you get in my paint kits is really luscious and quite thick. It's yummy. It's the same consistency as the acrylic paint itself. So it lends itself great for doing faces because it does have really good coverage. So super happy about that in here. So I'm using a combination of the colors apricot and flesh color to get the first coat of my skin color down. If I make a mistake, I just take a Lysol wipe or a baby wipe and you can actually just kind of scrape it off really quickly if that happens. You know, we're, we're just human, things happen, mistakes happen. And then once that is done, make no mistake, I am drying between layers. I just don't videotape it because it's super boring. <laughs> so I'm going in with another Stabilo, well, a couple of colors. And yes, they are all super water reactive. So you just need to be aware of your materials, um, what's going to happen. Now, just so you know, this is layer three. 
Layer three of the hamburger system has begun. As soon as you're finished painting and you start drawing on top and you have a lot of options, you can do water soluble supplies like my Stabilos here that will react when I put paint on top. Or you can use, if you don't want your materials to move guys, don't choose things like the Stabilo. Go for colored pencils, go for regular pencils. Um, you always have a choice between water soluble and permanent. So choose wisely and just know that if you're choosing items that will react when you add liquid and paint is liquid then you know if you don't want that to happen don't use those so you have lots and lots of choices and that's why this cheat sheet ended up being a book is because I ended up doing all this product research and really like deep diving into what projects you can use on what layer and so that ends up being the main body of the book so my favorite way to shade faces well I lied I have two favorite ways to shade paint to shade faces but you know what my least favorite way <laughs> to shade faces is actually by blending acrylic paint with acrylic paint. Um, it's super challenging and difficult, especially if you have big honking sunglasses on your girls, like trying to get the shading correct underneath is a nightmare. So what I love to do, again, still working on layer, th layer three of the hamburger here, is using gelatos because all it takes is the moisture from your fingertip to blend it really, really beautifully. So I am working with a reference photo. It's taped right above my canvas. And so I'm just looking at my reference photo and I'm saying, okay, where are the areas darker on my reference photo? And wherever those areas are, I'm taking my gelatos and just using my fingertip, blending them over acrylic paint. You guys, it's genius. It's so easy. And it's very satisfying because it's so quick. And if it's too much, you just take a wipe and wipe it off because gelatos are water soluble. Now, as part of the mixed media hamburger system there, I go quite in depth on also, there's like different levels of water solubility. So some supplies are super crazy reactive like the Stabilos and some are just kind of like beautifully blendable and that would be the gelatos. They definitely fall into that category. So gelatos make a great way, are a great way to blend and just all you do is put them over dried acrylic paints and then they kind of just work their magic with the lovely little sweat that naturally exists on your fingertips. I know, gross, but so true and it works like a charm. So now I'm trying to like kind of <laughs> work with her hair color. These are two colors again for my Fairy Faces kit. It's This is Mauve and Magenta and I I picked out colors from my kit that matched the spray paint colors that I already had going on in the background. And again, you can see even like my Stabilo colors that I use for his sunglasses outlines are match, match the backgrounds as well. So I always figure like, well, if things are going to be sliding and smearing around, I might as well have them match. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just putting a nice base coat. And of course, this is um, going back to layer two, which is if as long as you're staying under the limits of layer four. So layer four is where you're sealing everything in with your sealant layer. So as long as you haven't sealed yet, you can work freely back and forth between layer one two and three and you I could add I could add um collage at this time I could keep painting at this time I can keep going back like I am right now adding more gelatos so that's again we're staying under layer four you can go back and forth you can go three two one one two three two three one if you're feeling crazy and you're safe to do those um and you won't mess up your project so Oh, I almost forgot. Arteza sent me these really cool iridescent acrylics that I haven't played with until today. So that was really exciting as well. Um, this was like the perfect sunglasses cover. And then I thought, well, and they're iridescent. So they're kind of shiny, like real sunglasses. Like what? Perfect project to try these out on. I was super psyched. And they marry perfectly well with any other acrylic. So they go awesome with a Lucas Krill that I'm already using. So I was a happy camper in my art studio today. I'm not going to lie. Getting those shapes to be symmetrical is like a pipe dream that I don't even bother having. I just <laughs> just do them the best that I can. And I know they're going to be wonky and I don't even care. If you wanted to really make something symmetrical, I would do one. I would cut it out of a piece of paper and then I would mirror it. I would like fold that piece of paper in half and trace it. So I would have two 
of the same exact sunglasses shapes. Oh, camera malfunction there. But like, honestly, I'm just not that picky and I hate doing things that take care and time because I'm like an impatient five-year-old. So I just know they're going to be wonky and I don't really care. I just kind of keep going. Um, but yes, there are definitely ways that you can be more careful. <laughs> but if you like being careful, you should probably watch someone else's channel because I'm never careful about anything or precious. Um, and it's so funny. I didn't even notice that her nose and mouth don't line up. I didn't notice until I was pretty much almost done. And then I was like, huh, yeah, they don't line up. Oh well, so what are you gonna do? Too late now. So here I am adding a little bit more drama by just choosing, this is a melon. So when I do Caucasian girls, oh, and by the way, I do have a video on YouTube showing a dark skinned girl and created with the same gelato over acrylics techniques. And I will link that right here, the eye in the corner of your screen. And, um, but anyways, so you can do this same technique over dark skin girls as you can with light skin girls, just in case you were wondering. It's just fantastic and it's so incredibly easy. And like I said, I'm literally show up on YouTube every Friday just to make your life easier. If I can show you these little tips and tricks, like what the heck, I'm gonna do it, gosh darn it. All right, so you have this little blendy poo and it looks a little kind of in finish, but again, this is layer three. So I went from two back to painting, back to threes which is the gelato. And then I'm flipping back to layer two because I'm gonna add some iridescent paint. Oh, you can see my reference photo right up there. Oh, and Jamie, what's up my friend? Um, I'm putting some pink iridescent paint into her hair, which again, that's from Arteza, which I do love, they're so fun. I like the little tube sizes they come into. I think it's like three or four ounces. It's just a perfect, like, um, it's a perfect addition to whatever matte color paint that you're working with um just have some little hair little flings but yeah look how the iridescent that looks it looks nice i'm talking about the iridescent on our sunglasses right now um but i do like the little highlights it causes in her hair as well so that was just like a pink it's like a pink, although it looks gold on her actual pink hair, but I was fine with whatever. So I also chose this, oh, by the way, that is the flesh color um, in the gelato. Gelato has the best colors ever. They're like every color you could ever want. Um, so what was I saying? I forget. So, okay, I'm still in the hamburger and I'm going to layer two back to paint. So I'm really, as you can see, flip-flopping between layer two and three over and over again. So it's just nice to kind of hang out here for a while. And what I normally do, oh, I know what I was going to say, is I was trying, I was talking with some ladies in my Facebook group and a lot of them requested lessons and more videos on facial expressions. So that's why I have this little pucker face today. And one thing I do have to say is if you're interested and learning how to draw expressions, you cannot be afraid to add lines on your faces. And it's not crazy. If you notice at the end of this, there's just like a little tiny expression lines. But if you overdo the lines, they look like you have really big mistakes on your canvas or in your art journal. And if you do them subtly, you usually just get like a nice little accent to your face expressions. But you need something to show people that, you know, the face is doing something. All right, this is layer four. This is my favorite layer. So this is Mod Podge, which is the sealant. You have many sealant options. I have a whole series. I didn't even mention this. I have a nine series of videos all on the different layers of the hamburger system. So I will link to all of these. There's a hamburger series playlist, which has all of them in there. Um, so if you don't have Mod Podge, I know um, people in the UK have a lot of trouble getting a hold of Mod Podge. You have a t there's actually a lot of alternatives and I test them out in the videos and I list them out in the book as well. Um, but Mod Podge is my go-to. It's cheap, it's easy. It dries in like two minutes with a hair dryer. And so I seal in everything. So this is silver Lucas Krill paint, which again is out of my fairy faces. And I am... Um, I applied it with a credit card because you know how you get those streaks on your glasses that are like super duper straight. So I wanted to make sure I got them all in one foul swoop. I think I overdid it on the right. So I'm just taking a wipe and kind of wiping that out. All right, so if my first favorite way of shading faces is using the gelatos on top 
of the acrylic paint my second favorite well i think they tie for for number one actually is using paint markers or permanent paint markers like these pit pens to add shading over the mod podge or layer four so remember the layer four is the mod podge layer sealant and layer five is where i love to hang out as well for quite a long time and this is where i do all my shading so what happens is the mod podge creates a very slick and this is matte mod podge but it's still slick and yes you can use glossy and it creates this beautiful slick surface so what happens is i'm using the side of my pit pens and by the way the big brush pens are out of production they're not making them anymore but don't worry because the thin ones are still in production and they are they, they contain the exact same ink that the big brush ones have so don't panic it's all you the ink is what we want I don't really care about the barrel of the marker so hopefully that makes you feel better um and so I love to like doodle all around my girl on top of this slick mod podge layer because when you want to blend all you have to do is use your fingertip to blend things in you have like a 30 second window where it's still wet and you can just blend them out like paint it's they work exactly like the gelatos but because gelato are so you know they have like a blunt large large tip it's like a completely different style and level of shading because these have a fine point on them you can like outline things places that you want outline if you need to blend it out you just use your fingertip and sometimes just like before you add layer four the sealant layer I can work with one two and three over and over and over the same thing happens um, in this layer as well. So I can hang out here for a while and stay with this blending and I'll, I will blend and blend all day long until I get the shading how I like it. If things are moving and getting weird on you, what I like to do is I will do another layer of Mod Podge. So that could be considered layer six or you can consider it layer four repeated. And then you can go back and add more detail shading. Again, you can use, you can go four, five, six, four, five, six, as many times as you need to, to get the shading just how you want it. And whenever you're happy with a layer and you want to freeze it, you can add that level, that sealant layer again. And then you're like, hmm, I kind of want to go back and add a little bit more here. Then you can totally do that again. Go back to layer five and add a bit more seal, etc. So I only actually seal it once during this project because I was like, okay, I was having a good time with it. I she wasn't causing me many problems. But there are many, there are many projects where I do seal a number of times because it helps me develop my shading even more. So it's just a cool way to like freeze a layer and then move on without disrupting anything. And then also say I hated all the shading on her face right now that I've done with the pit pens. I could take a wipe and wipe 100% of it off and everything under that sealant layer. So all my layers one, two, and three would be completely preserved because they're under the sealant layer. It's a little magical because you have complete and utter control over each layer. Okay, pay attention. Here are the little lip lines that you really need to have in your project in order to have the puckered expression. Because without having any sort of lines or shading or any details here, they're just not going to look puckered. They're just going to look awkwardly small mouth. Do you know what I'm saying? So you need something, something, some lip lines, something on the skin that causes it to look puckered. But if you notice, they're really subtle. Again, if you have the, if your marks are black, they, they sort of, they're going to stick out like a sore thumb on your face and they're going to look really weird. But if you just have kind of some very subtle skin tones, you can make the, the subtle impression that she's making that kind of smoochy face mouth. And then, of course, the highlights just go last. It's my favorite part of every project. Um, you can use paint pens. You can use pit pens here. Whatever you have laying around, um, it just makes a really stark contrast, and I absolutely love it. So to finish this painting off, what I would do is, after this layer, do another layer, layer six of the sealant, and then layer seven is super important, especially if you're working in an art journal, which is your varnish like final spray sealant la level layer. So make sure, sure, sure you do that. And you won't have any regrets. I'm going to link right here to the whole mixed media hamburger system so that you can watch and learn more if you're interested. Thanks for watching.